Hi, folks. I'm Howard Lux. I'm Jeff Berg. Uh, we are two boneheads. We're bringing you an extraordinarily long uh, amount of orthopedic experience. Um, we're giving you our insight today into shoulder instability, or what we call a shoulder dislocation. There's some controversy out there as how you manage this. Do we operate on a first-time dislocator? Do we not operate on it? Why are you dislocating? And why do you have the risk of uh, another, di another dislocation? So, Jeff, what happens when the shoulder dislocates? So, basically, what a dislocation is, is that the ball part of your shoulder, where your arm is, top of it, comes out of the socket. Most often, it comes out the front. That's the most common way it happens, uh, but sometimes it can go out the back or even uh, in another direction. And typically the most common thing that, that results from that is that uh, the ligaments that hold the ball and the socket together attach at the cup side, the, ball, the, uh, the uh, socket side, to a structure called the labrum. And most often that labrum pulls off the cup. So now that ligament that's supposed to be holding the ball and the socket together is only attached on one side, and it doesn't provide any support. Does it heal back into place after uh, the shoulder is reduced in an emergency room? Yeah, uh, probably not to any great degree. I mean, you and I probably don't see a whole lot of those patients. Uh, if there's healing, they don't tend to come back and see us, but we don't really think that it heals in the right place. Now, with that said, not everybody has a recurrence, and you and I know that um, – Typically, in older patients, patients involved in less um, contact-type activities or activities uh, that put their arm in such a position that might uh, cause dislocation, such as sort of overhead-type uh, activities, uh, are less likely to dislocate. But that doesn't mean that that tissue is healed in the right spot. Right. Do you treat uh, a first-time dislocator in a sling after their injury? Do you externally rotate them? Do you put them in a special brace? Yeah, I think that really the, 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 there was a time where we thought if you put them in an external rotation brace, that might get the labrum to where it needs to be, and then it could heal in the position. And uh, more recent studies have shown that's not terribly accurate or, or doesn't really work well. And I, I found that impossible to have somebody stand with their arms straight in front of them for weeks on end. So it was never really even clinically practical. As far as having a regular sling, I think I, the way I use it is more for the patient's comfort. I don't think that it is needed. I don't think that it um, serves any real um, sort of purposes getting them better. But sometimes they're uncomfortable or they can't use their arm because it's sore, and they may use a sling for a brief period of time. At least that's how I do it. I agree. Uh, I agree. Staying in a sling is not going to affect what, whether or not you're going to dislocate once again. So the risk of having another dislocation or a second dislocation is usually based on your age um, and then se secondarily your activities. So if you're a contact athlete, you're going to have a higher chance of redislocating. So if a young person, uh, say under 21, uh, has a 30, 40% chance of redislocation and they're a linebacker, um, on their football team, there's a substantial risk of redislocation. Um, are these people an, uh, a candidate to consider surgery after the first dislocation? Yeah, I mean, our, our, our earlier teaching used to tell us, well, you know, you should probably hold off on first-time dislocators. But, but I, I, I think that sort of has changed a little bit. You know, now, now we worry a little bit about the bone damage that occurs with recurrent dislocation. So when the ball pops out of the socket, I don't know if you can see it, sometimes you'll get a ding on the front of the socket, and sometimes you'll get a ding on the back of the ball. And if you get too much of that bone damage, then uh, it sometimes requires a much more complicated procedure with greater risk and, and perhaps not as, uh, not as uh, well-known prognosis. So in an effort to try to get those patients uh, back with a simpler arthroscopic procedure, if I have a young guy who I know is going back um, uh, to a contact activity, then I'm probably operating on him or her. If I have a patient who's not involved in contact activities, maybe a little older in their 20s, maybe they fell down the steps. I'm assuming they're not going to plan on falling down the steps again. Uh, they're not involved in contact sports. 
that's a person that I, I probably would not operate and, and we would try. And, and I'll try to caution these patients. I mean, if they have recurrent instability, even if the shoulder doesn't come out of the joint, they may be doing damage to the bone and that, and that can jeopardize uh, our ability to do a, a more simpler arthroscopic procedure. I agree. There's been a lot more emphasis on the secondary damage after the second and third dislocation. Uh, it's not unusual for me to have a first-time dislocator here in the office that chooses non-surgical treatment. And then you see them back a few years later and they want to have surgery because they now have had eight dislocations. Uh, the problem is, is they've seriously compromised um, the success of the procedure because every time the shoulder dislocates, they stretch the ligaments a little more, the labrum gets, be gets beaten up a little more, and they've rubbed a little bit more bone off of the front of the socket or the glenoid. And so even though we have techniques to uh, improve the chance of success, the chance of long-term success and getting back to sports after many dislocations is pretty low. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I mean, I've had some patients who are young and they've had multiple dislocations and all that repetitive trauma to the shoulder, they have early osteoarthritic changes. Yeah. In their and, and even if I can get their shoulder stable, which, you know, in that osteoarthritic patient is a lot easier they're going to have problems. They're going to have it pretty soon and it, and it can be really disabling. So in the young active patient, I think the paradigm has changed and I'll be a little more aggressive in operating on that patient. As patients start to age and their activity level goes down, then I start to switch and watch them. But if they have a second dislocation, I, I'd, I'd recommend surgery. Even if they don't have a dislocation, I mean, I, if they have a second instability episode, it just feels loose or partially comes out joint, I'll recommend surgery. I, I agree. Uh, so in young, 25 and under, contact athletes or uh, high-intensity athletes, uh, rock climbers, et cetera, we're going to fix a first-time dislocator because we know what the consequences are if you go on to have a second, third, and further dislocation. We know the results of that surgery are going to diminish pretty significantly. There, there is one, one thing that would be interesting to hear what your thoughts are. What do you do in season? So let's say you got a guy and it's, uh, he's six weeks into his football season. He's a senior. Uh, maybe he's not planning on playing collegiate football. This is it for him. His team's doing well, and he really, really wants to finish the season. He has dislocation, let's say maybe the fourth week of the season. And now, you know, by it's now week eight. There's three more games left. His team's going to go to the playoffs, so maybe there's five games left, six games left if they do really well. And he really wants to play. What do you tell him? Yeah, you put me in a great position there. Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's the real world. It? It, is, it is something that we uh, have a conversation about quite, quite often. We know that if that athlete has a second dislocation, uh, especially if it's a high-energy one from a contact, that the results of the surgery, even, even after the season, are going to be less than, than, than if we fixed it then. So I will have a discussion uh, with the parents and the patient together. Uh, I'm going to recommend uh, that they think about not playing. Um, uh, however, uh, if they choose to play, they have a very clear understanding that they're putting their shoulder at risk. Again, as you mentioned, there's a risk of osteoarthritis. If there is another traumatic, traumatic dislocation, and there's a risk of a compromised result. But it's a tricky situation because you're treating not only the, the child, you're treating the parents, the coach, and the team. Um, it's not a good place to be in. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's the same thing. I, I don't have a cut and dry way I handle it. I talk to each patient individually, and we try to come up with what's best and right for them. And I think part of it sometimes depends on what position they are. And, and clearly, if they go back in and they have another episode, I'm really urging them to get out of there. Big problem. All right, folks. Have a great day.